Hey guys, thanks for joining me for another episode of Learn to Play Games. My name is Lance, and today we're going to take a look at Perlock Holmes Furiority's Trail. This is a brand new game that was put out by IDW Games. It is a 2-5 player game, and it takes roughly 20-30 to 30 minutes to play. It is a competitive game with a semi-cooperative element in it as far. So basically the players are going to win or lose as a group. But if they win, then it's going to be the player that has the most points that will be declared the overall winner. So the backstory to this is that Fiority is terrorizing London. And his goons are set out to, to commit other crimes and to assist him. So each of the players is, try is a brand new inspector that is trying to help Perlock Holmes track down and capture Fioriority. And they're going to do this by gaining clues that will help them determine which suspects have committed crimes at what times. And as they do this, they're going to gain paw points that will help them be the overall best inspector at the end of the game. So my opinions of this game so far have been very positive. I've had a lot of fun with it, and I think that IDW Games really nailed it with this title. I also really like the artwork. I think that they did an excellent job mixing the cat theme with the Sherlock Holmes mythology. And it really does immerse the players in the game and help them to feel like they're inspectors, chasing after suspects, gaining clues, and determining what time those suspects committed those crimes. And with the other players competing with you, it really gives you that sense of urgency and making, making hard decisions on whether or not you wait that extra turn to get more clues to help you really cement what suspect did it at what time, or if you push your luck and try to guess, or maybe just choose one or the other and uh, move on to another case that might be able to go a little bit faster for you. And the game plays very fast. And I think this is an excellent game for both families and uh, gaming groups of all different types. As, like I said, it's very quick and it's easy to pick up on. And it's, it does lend itself very well to all types of different groups and families. And if you're playing with young kids, which I think that they could even pick up on this, you can even tweak the rules a little bit where there isn't an overall winning player. You can say that uh, if the players catch Fiority, the game is won and all the, all, everybody is won. So it's easy to work in that way as well. So I'd also love to hear your guys' opinions and thoughts. Have you guys played this? Is this one that you're, that you're looking at picking up? Uh, if you've played it with the family, how well is it done? Have you changed the rules? I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts in the comments section below. So let's go ahead and head to the table, and I'll teach you guys how to play. The player board will be used to keep track of the player's leads, on the side with the pipe and their dead ends, which is the side with the fish. It also will help them when determining their suspect by giving them the five different suspects that are in the game and a clock to help them determine the hour that the crime was committed. On the back side of the, car, of the uh, player board as well, if you decide to use it, you can call pause and we'll cover this a little bit more later, but then you would flip this tile over to the pause side, which will give you a negative one to your final score. The clue deck is going to have 12 cards of each of the suspects, so the dog, goose, crow, toad, and rat, and each suspect will have one card that represents each hour on the clock, for a total deck size of 60 cards. For board setup, the first thing you're going to want to do is grab all the paw tokens, mix them up, and then place them out based on the number of players as shown in the chart as you guys can see here. Then you're going to go ahead and place them out, so we'll do that. For player setup, each player will get a stand, their player dashboard. From there, go ahead and grab the deck of cards, clue cards, and shuffle them up. And deal out one to each player to seed the investigation. So then each player is going to take this card without looking at it. They're going to place it in their stand facing the other, direct, the other players. And then each player will receive two cards to help them with their investigation. And then we're going to go ahead and start with the player to describe the, the seeding investigation step. So normally, like I said, the player will not know what their suspect is. But for this video, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys so you can see what the suspect is. And so you can understand how this works. From here, then they're going to go ahead and reveal those two cards that they got. And each one, the players are going to tell them, is either a lead or a dead end. In order for a card to be a lead, 
either the suspect on the card must match the suspect that the player is pursuing, or the time is within one hour or at the hour of the suspect's card. So, for example, any card that is a five, six, or four will match and be a lead for this particular suspect's time frame. So with this card being that it does not match our suspect and it is not within that time frame, it is going to be a dead end. And so the players are going to tell our player that this is a dead end. And they must always tell truthfully whether it is a lead or a dead end. Okay, so now with this one, our suspects match. So this is going to be a lead. Now, if this was within the time frame of this as well, then the players would not tell the player which one of the, the conditions is met. They're simply going to say that it's a lead. So the player will move it over to their lead side. And then we'll move over to the other player so you guys can see how that works as well. So again, we'll flip over and reveal. So this is a dead end. And a second dead end. So that is the seed the investigation step. And then from there, then we can go ahead and choose one player to be the starting player. So we're going to go ahead and have our player over here be the starting player. And play is going to proceed in a clockwise manner. So then we're going to go ahead and take the Furiori token that does not have the number on it and put it in between the players to signal when Furiority is going to take his turn and move his token. So after our player here takes his turn, Furiority will go and then it will kick back over to our other player. Finally, each player is, the starting player is going to be dealt four cards, and every other player will receive two. At this point, we're ready to start the game. Each player's turn is going to consist of two phases, the action phase and the cleanup phase. So let's go ahead and start with our starting player here, and we're going to go ahead and take his turn. So we're going to move into the first phase, which is the action, action phase. So during his action phase, he must perform an investigate action, which is to play two of the clue cards that he has, and he must play two clue cards even if he knows the details of his suspect and is just simply going to guess. He still must play two of his clue cards. So again, we're going to go ahead and, like I said before, this player is not going to know what suspect he's going after, but for this example, we're going to reveal it so you guys know what it is. From here, he has gotten some help ready from his, when he did his seed investigation. So we know by looking at these cards that both the times match. So it, that tells us right away that it, it, this time is incorrect for this lead card. And so we, also, we know now that with this being a lead card, either the time or the suspect matches our suspect we're going after. So we know now that the suspect we're going after is a goose. We just need to determine the time that she committed the crime. So we're going to go ahead and look at our cards to see what we have and see if we can help determine that a little bit more. So we're going to go ahead and play this card here. And again, the players are going to tell us honestly whether this is a lead or a dead end. So again, the card does not match our suspect. And the time frame is not correct as our suspect, in order for this to be a lead, this card would need to be a four, five, or six for the hour. So this is a dead end. And so we'll place it over in our dead end stack. And then we play one more card. So we're gonna go ahead and play this card here. So again, it does not mas match our suspect, but this time, the time frame is correct. It is four, five, or six, which this one is. So this is going to be a lead. And so we'll place it in the lead section. That will conclude our action phase, or the investigate action. And then we have the choice to perform the guest action. Now this is, we do not have to guess, but we can choose to. And when we perform a guess, we must tell the other players what we're going to guess, whether it's going to be the suspect, the time, or both. From there, so let's go ahead and say that our player here, he knows it's a goose and he would like to make a guess. So he's going to declare the other players that he's going to make a guess and he's going to guess the suspect and not the time. From there, then he's going to say that he is, the suspect is a goose. 
So if he gets the guess correct, then he will take a paw for each guess that he made correctly. So if he would have guessed the suspect and the time, he would receive two paws. But since he only guessed the suspect, then he will receive one. Now, if a guess is incorrect, then he would not receive any paws and his turn would be over. He would pass his cards on and he would not receive two cards at the end during the cleanup phase, as you guys will see when we move into that. So let's go ahead and say that again that he made a guess and that he guessed that it was a goose. At this point, he did get it correct, so he would receive one paw, so he'll take one paw from the line and he'll add it to his playing area. Now he does not reveal this to the other players, but he can take a look at it and see how many points it is just to kind of help him keep track of what is potentially out there and how he's doing in the game. Now, once you've made a successful guess, then you will clear your area of your suspect and all of the cards that you had. Those will go into the discard pile and you will receive a new card face down that you will place in your she, your uh, stand up just like we did before and you will see the investigation so you will receive two cards that will be played immediately to help you on tracking down your new suspect so again we'll reveal this and again this one is going to be a dead end as well as this one will be a dead end from there then we'll move into the cleanup phase the cleanup phase the first thing you're going to do is pass two cards that you have to the next player. If you do not have cards to pass, then the next player will draw two cards from the deck. After that, then if you made if you made a guess and got it correct, or if you did not guess, then you will draw two cards. But if you guessed incorrectly, then you will not receive any cards during your turn. From here, then we're ready to move on to our next player. So again, our player is not going to know the suspect, but we're going to go ahead and reveal it. And we're going to go ahead and play two cards. So we already know that it is not either one of those suspects. So let's go ahead and play this card here. And so this one is going to be a lead, not because the suspect matches, but because of the time frame. So we'll place that in the lead section. And our player still doesn't know a lot of information, so he's going to go ahead and play... He will play, he's going to play this card here, which again, he knows for a fact that the suspect is not going to be correct, but the time frame might be correct, which again, this is going to be a lead. So that is going to help him with that. He is not going to make a guess. And so he is going to move on to the cleanup phase. So he's going to pass his two cards to our other player, and then he will draw two cards at the end of his turn. From here, then we're ready to move on. And so it, at this point, Fioriority is going to be able to take his turn. So he is going to move one space forward on the track and we will flip over the paw that he moves over. So as you guys saw, he was here. And so he would simply move up. This guy would be flipped and you would put his token back in. From here, it's going to continue going until Fiority either is caught by the players, as he is claimed as one of the paw points that the players would get, or he makes it all the way to the end of the board, and at that point, the players would have one final turn. If they do not catch him at that point, he escapes, and the pl all the players are going to lose the game. So let's go ahead and take a look at another round here. So again, our, pl our next player is our player over here to go. And so we're going to reveal to you guys, so you can see what it is, and we're going to go ahead and play some cards. So let's go ahead and play this one here. So this again is going to be a dead end. And we'll go ahead and play this one here, which will also be a dead end. So our player over here has not had much luck, and he is not going to make any guesses. So his turn, he's going to move into his cleanup phase, which he's going to pass two cards, and he is going to collect two cards. Moving over to our next player's turn, he's going to go ahead and start off with his action phase. So we're going to go ahead and play two cards to try to help him figure out his suspect. So we already have a pretty good idea of the time frame because we have two cards that both 
were leads. And so let's go ahead and determine if these are for the time or if they were for the suspect. So we're going to go ahead and play this one first. And the other players are going to tell us that this is a dead end. So at this point, we know for a fact that it is not the goose. And so it is the time frame that is correct on this one or that is a lead for this card. And we know that it is not the toad either. So both of these are for the time. And so now we know that it is two o'clock and we have to play another card, but we still have, don't have the dog or a rat for the suspect. So we know that neither one of those, any of these cards are going to help us. So we're just going to go ahead and play this one here. And again, the players are going to tell us it's a dead end. And so we'll move it there. Now at this point, again, we can choose to make a guess. And so our player is going to be a little bit more risky. And again, Another thing to keep in mind is that you can use not only the cards that you have on your area, but any other, other cards that other players have to kind of help you determine your particular uh, suspect as well. Now, you cannot choose to look through the discard pile, but anybody that has a good memory can also uh, remember some of the things that are in there, as there is only each card is only represented one time in the deck. So, no any card that's played already or is in another player's field will also help the player uh, determine his suspect as any player that has cards will not be the cards that our suspect has. So our player is going to go ahead and make a guess. He's going to choose both the time and the suspect. And so he's going to say that it is to, at 2 o'clock and that it is the dog. As he got the dog wrong, his guess was incorrect. And so he would not receive any paw points. And during his cleanup phase, he will not receive cards. So he's going to go ahead and move into his cleanup phase. And he will pass his two cards over and will not get to collect two cards for his turn. So I've moved the game ahead a couple turns now. And so we're going to jump back in and we're going to start with our player over here again. So again, we're going to play cards and I'll reveal the suspect. So we're going to go ahead and play this one here, and this is going to be a dead end. Then we will play this one, and it is a lead. And so our player has has a feels like he has a pretty good grasp on things, so he's going to make a guess. He's going to say that he's going to guess both the suspect and the time that he committed the crime. So he's going to say that the suspect is a crow, and he committed the crime at midnight. So he got this incorrect. And so his turn will end. He's going to go ahead and pass his two cards to the next player, and he will not get to draw cards during his turn or during that phase. And so we're going to move back over to our player over here who's going to play some cards. So he's going to play this one first. And so this is going to be a lead. And then he's going to play that one. And that is going to be a lead as well. So at this point, then our player over here is about ready to determine if he wants to make a guess. Our player over here is pretty nervous that our player is going to get a lot of points. So he is going to go ahead and call pause, flip his card over, which at the end of the game, this is going to be a negative one to his total score. And what this does is allows him to make a guess. And this can do, be done at any time, even during another player's turn. So again, he's going to go ahead and make his guess. So he's going to say that he's going to guess both the suspect and time and that it is a crow and that it was done at one o'clock. This time he is correct. And so he is going to receive two paw point or the two paws and he'll move those over there. And then he's going to clear his board as usual and he will get to seed a new investigation. So he'll do that. And again, he's going to reveal two cards. This is a dead end. And this is also a dead end. So then we would move back into this player's turn, which he is just trying to decide whether or not he was going to make a guess. And so he is going to make a guess. And again, he's going to say suspect in time, and he will say the toad at 6 o'clock, which is correct. And so he would gain the two tokens. And at this point, since Fury already was captured, 
the game is over, so there is no need for us to seed another investigation. And we will go, go ahead and total up the points. So our player over here has gotten 1, 3, 4, 5, plus the 3 for Fiorarty for a total of 8 points. And our player over here only has paw points, so let's see how he did. We know he has 6 that he picked up this turn, and he has 8, 9, 10 points. But he did use his paws, so he's going to remove one point from that, so he's going to have a total of nine points. And it's not that I'm taking the token away, a token away, it's just simply that this is a one-point token, and he loses one point, so I'm just removing that. So he had nine points to our other player's eight points. And so he is going to be the winner, and will become Scotland Pound's Chief Inspector. The player that has the least amount of points will become the Scotland, Scotland Pound Litter Box Inspector. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below, and I'll do my best to answer them. I've also just started up a brand new Facebook and Twitter account, so if you guys could join me over there, I'd appreciate it. I do have links to those in the description. And I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on this game. Is this one that you like? Have you played it? Have you tried it out? Is this one that you're looking to pick up? What other games from IDW are you guys interested in or have you guys played or enjoyed? I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on that. And if you enjoyed this video, if you like what I do, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing to my channel as it really does help me out a lot. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching my videos. I do really appreciate that you take the time to watch my videos and to leave me comments or feedback in the section below. And until next time, I will see you guys later.